This week on Council Bluffs News, Honor Flight. Hundreds of Korean War veterans take the trip to Washington, D.C. to see the memorials. Downtown parking. City officials weigh in on the matter as new development wants to make changes. And Disability Employment Awareness Month. We have details on an upcoming forum in our in-studio interview. That and more on this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News, I'm Marie Zeitner. Since 2005, thousands of America's veterans have taken the honor flight to Washington, D.C. There, they visit memorials corresponding with the wars they served in. September 30th, 385 Korean War veterans get the chance to travel to the nation's capital with the Central Iowa Honor Flight. The day begins as normal for most. Only this breakfast takes place at 3 a.m. It's an early wake-up call for Korean War veterans ready for a visit to the nation's capital. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it'll be a great experience. September 30th, 385 veterans get to know each other while preparing for the Central Iowa Honor Flight to Washington, D.C. It's outstanding that we can have such a thing. I am honored and privileged to be a part of it. These men and women who served for our country are bound to experience a flood of different emotions as they visit five memorials in just a few hours. I want to see the monument to us, the Korean conflict. I have a son in the Army who has recommended the Korean monument to me. And he said, Mom, you must see that. So it's very timely that I can go and be with all these men and go see that monument. While most have never seen the monuments in person before, this isn't the first rodeo for a handful of veterans. I flew in the World War II flight uh, about five years ago. So being in Korea, so I qualified for this one too. Anticipation of what's ahead has everyone excited to make the trip to Washington, D.C. I'm looking forward to you know, enjoying the day and being outdoors and just seeing everything that I can. CBTV goes along with the Korean War veterans to Washington, D.C. After boarding everyone onto a 747 aircraft, we take off out of Des Moines around 6.30 a.m. After a two-hour flight, we land at Dulles International Airport in Virginia, where the veterans are greeted with a warm welcome. Supporters cheer as the veterans arrive near the nation's capital. Thank you! After two hours in the sky, the Honor Flight heroes hop aboard charter buses on their way to Arlington National Cemetery and Memorial Amphitheater in Arlington, Virginia. As guards pay tribute to fallen soldiers, the veterans watch and take pictures. To me, the unknown soldier is fantastic. It really is. On the way to their next stop, a glimpse of the Iwo Jima Monument. This famous statue shows Marines hoisting an American flag. Next, everyone is chartered to the Korean Memorial, created in 1995. Since I'm a Korea veteran, this is my favorite place right here. This memorial means the most to this group of veterans as it's called the Korean. Most of these statues were established in 1994. The statues resemble soldiers in action on the battlefield. For some, the trip elicits vivid memories of their time in war. We were on uh, a hill called uh, Outpost Harry, and uh, we knew days ahead of time that we were going to get hit by a force about three times larger than we were of Chinese. 
George Buck served in the U.S. Army during the Korean War. He tells the story of surviving an invasion by Chinese militants. All I could do is grab my carbine and and just as they were coming in, I was going out with the with my uh, carbine and uh, then they they would throw another grenade and I could hear Glenn there sizzling. Buck played dead in order to survive. After waiting several hours, he was rescued by fellow Americans. That's some of the things you do and really not thinking. You just, you just want to survive. And those who didn't survive are not forgotten. A large mural helps others remember their personal experiences. It brings back a lot of memories for one thing. I told my wife, I said, I've had this hat on going to this country longer than I've had you. I've had her 60 years. Most meaningful are the messages there in the uh, <clears throat> granite telling how many people lost their lives and were captured. In addition to the heartfelt reflection, the Korean Memorial brings out a sense of pride in the vets. I believe that uh, I was born in the best country in the world and even though we have made a few mistakes, uh, there's no place like the United States of America. The honor flight also stops at this World War II memorial, a war in which some of these Korean veterans also served in. As soon as the war heroes <laughs> step off the buses, the first thing they see is the word Iowa carved on a wall. Each wall represents either the Atlantic or Pacific Oceans. In the middle is a fountain from which the Lincoln Monument is in great view. Just super, super, you know, the whole program is just, just great. A wall full of stars also catches the veterans' attention. Each star represents 100 fallen soldiers, and there are 4,048 of them. The last stop brings the group back to Arlington, Virginia. The Air Force Memorial is the newest of those visited, created in October of 2006. If I didn't come today, I probably would never get a chance to come. With everyone thanking these men and women for their service, it's the veterans who are truly grateful for this opportunity. I really appreciate uh, Hy-Vee and Casey's and the others who sponsor this, this flight for us. I'm really uh, pleased with this uh, honor flight. It's amazing to see so many South Koreans here, and they're very appreciative. So it's been a wonderful experience. After another bus ride and another flight, the long day concludes with another salute waiting back in Des Moines as the veterans return home. First at the airport, and again at the hotel. A 21-hour day worth every second. hy V and Casey's General Stores paid for the expenses of the one-day trip. The veterans did very well, and everyone I talked to enjoyed themselves. The Korean War took place from 1950 to 1953 to help unify North and South Korea. The mission was unsuccessful, but the service of these men and women is forever appreciated. Plans are in the works for developing new subdivisions around town. This week, Don Gross informs us on a large housing area that will start to develop soon. Well, hello again. This is Don Gross with the Community Development Department with City Council Bluffs. Uh, last week we talked about uh, some subdivision activity in the community uh, uh, at various locations. Uh, this week I'd like to talk about a proposal that we received about a week ago. It's a fairly large subdivision at Greenview uh, and Franklin Avenue. Actually, uh, there's a water tower on Greenview. It would be the land essentially to the north of that. Um, it's a fairly large subdivision of over 100, 400 lots. Um, it's being proposed by uh, BHI Development out of Omaha, and it is primarily single family, uh, as far as I can tell. There's no multifamily, no attached product in it that I know of. So we'll be reviewing that, and then I'll go to council sometime in October. 
Now to news around the bluffs. Shaped by the hair company Hair Salon, 22 years of operation, appointments by phone at 323-6686. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month and the community is hosting a number of events to help raise money for research. October 2nd, people gather inside Barley's on the 100 block to kick off the pink out. We started this event about four years ago with the fire department when they decided to wear pink shirts for the month of October to support breast cancer. So we came up with the idea of Impact CB, the young professional group, hosting a kickoff of sorts where everyone could come, have some refreshments and pizza and get a t-shirt. Just kind of start October off right and get everyone excited about the pink out. More events will continue this week, including a 5K fun run and one mile walk, plus a pub crawl at the bars on the 100 block of West Broadway. Children's Square USA and Friends partner up for an open house and fundraiser for the organization. Food, displays, games, and more. The gathering October 5th shows the public what the nonprofit does for kids. Friends of Children's Square is here to support the programs at Children's Square. We help with fundraising and we promote uh, the organization and we try to get community involvement and awareness for what goes on at Children's Square USA. Halloween costumes are available through the end of the month for a minimum $10 donation at Children's Square USA. All proceeds go to a natural playground being built at First Christian Church. As new owners take over Thunder Bowl on Madison Avenue, McCoy's Restaurant Inside updates its look. The restaurant now has its own entrance and is complete with flat screen TVs. We've always had a small bar attached to the bowling center and the new owners decided to expand, renovate, add menu items so it appeals to a bigger variety of family and groups. McCoy's offers a full bar and menu. Even if you don't bowl, you can still enjoy the food and specials any night of the week. Interstate construction has been going on for the past few years along I-80 and I-29. Now, I-29 southbound is taking a new route. The flyover bridge will open Friday, October 10th. According to the Council Bluffs Interstate Program, traffic will use the bridge to merge with I-80 eastbound on the right when traveling through the area. Coming up on Council Bluffs News, City Council discusses parking on the 100 block of West Broadway. And next, Sam Comfort of Goodwill joins us in studio to talk about Disability Employment Awareness Month. Todos tenemos un sueño. El mío era ver el océano. Y con un poco de ayuda, lo logré. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Marie Zeitner. Joining me in studio today is Sam Comfort from Goodwill. Thanks for being here, Sam. Pleasure to be here. You're welcome. And uh, October is Disability Employment Awareness Month. It Go is. Ahead, kind of tell me what the purpose is. Um, the purpose of uh, National Disability Employment Awareness Month is to raise um, awareness in the community and educate the community about the need and the abilities of individuals with disabilities um, and their ability to work in the community. 
Goodwill did a um, kind of a forum on last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Kind of tell me what they did. Absolutely. Um, Mayor Walsh came and issued a proclamation in support of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Um, afterwards, we gave a tour to the mayor. Um, our participants in the Work Experience Program led the tour, educated him on what Goodwill does to help uh, high school students with disabilities, and then we had juice and cookies. Okay, and the month is not over yet, and you guys nope. are not done with your events? Not by a long shot. Um, on October 22nd, we're having a public forum. Everyone is welcome. Um, the goal is to educate the community, entice employers to hire individuals with disabilities, and then also be an advocate for individuals with disabilities. Okay, and that is on October 22nd. Mm -hmm. What it time? Is. 3 p.m. here at Iowa Western. Um, I don't remember the room, um, but it is, it, it is here at Iowa Western um, at 3 p.m. Okay, we can get that information up for you guys too. And is anybody welcome to come? Everyone is welcome. Um, we are inviting 10 employers as um, preferred guests, we'll call them. But anyone is welcome to come. Anyone who is part of the community is welcome to come and bring their insight. And what's the importance of Disability Employment Awareness Month? Um, individuals with disabilities are, are the most un- and underemployed group in our labor force in the nation. Um, it's vital that we employ these people and they bring benefits to employers. Um, working with these individuals every day, they're honest, trustworthy, hardworking individuals who just want a chance and an opportunity to, to earn a living. Okay, and you guys are helping to do that. We sure hope so. Thank you, Sam, for being here. Thank you. Stick around. More Council Bluffs news after the break. What does the world need? What will you become? Iowa Western. The world is waiting. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. The 100 block of West Broadway is becoming a hot spot for entertainment more and more each year. But with heavier traffic on the sidewalks and the streets, concerns with parking are on the rise. These days, the 100 block of West Broadway is bustling with activity. With more than 20 businesses, there's always something to do. The 100 block is, is a great location and it has changed through the years. Now, new development is in the works on the south side of the block. Called the Sawyer Building, it will provide both commercial and residential spaces. We're putting in 9,000 square feet of commercial space. Um, broken up into, it can be broken up anywhere from two to four commercial bays. And then we're doing uh, 26 housing units, uh, uh, two floors, and then a parking deck, and then, which is about 70 stalls. And then behind that on Pierce Street, we're doing 10 row houses. Owner of J Development, Julie Stavnik, wants to add outdoor dining. In the instance, a small restaurant moves into the building. The 100 block's a great place to be and continues to be a, a destination place. And for me, I think outdoor, urban life is is what helps create the synergy that that we want to continue due to elevation regulations the building has to be raised and a dock like structure will be put in at the entrance the initial concept was to essentially split the sidewalk in half uh, part of it would remain at the current grade and part of it would be raised and there'd be ramps at each end adding outdoor dining would extend the raised part toward the street resulting in controversial changes on the south side of the block. In order for us to be able to have outdoor dining, we uh, propose to uh, bump out uh, the deck, or the, the dock, if you will, 
but we would need to take uh, five uh, parking spaces away from the 100 block area to do so. That proposal caused concerns at the City Council meeting September 23rd. Several owners on the block were really worried about the loss of any parking. Yet others think outside dining will draw more attraction to the area. It would definitely not harm the 100 block. I think it would enhance. City Council denied the proposal by a 3-2 to two vote, keeping those five parking spaces there. Yet, there is still a need for more parking, which is being addressed along Vine Street, directly north of the businesses. And the city is building a parking lot that will add a lot of additional spaces, which will be a great addition to that block and hopefully help provide that needed parking for the key hours, you know, right after work, on the weekends when it gets busy. Roughly 25 more spaces are in the works, which will alleviate the busier times. As for the Sawyer building, Stavnik is still looking forward to bringing more activity to the 100 block. You know, we'll, we'll continue to develop the project and I'm excited. Um, I'm not having those stalls and, and being able to create the outdoor dining is a disappointment, but uh, it's not going to stop our development and, and we're excited to have some really good leads on some great uh, commercial tenants that we believe are going to add to the add to the district. So, J Development also proposed giving up five parking spaces from the Sawyer Building's parking lot for public use. However, the city thought that would cause confusion and more stress for those trying to find a place to park. With the cooler temperatures, the last farmer's market of 2014 takes place October 2nd. The storm on June 3rd ruined a large number of crops and orchards, but these vendors still managed to sell what made it through. As the foods change with the season, pumpkins make their way into some stands. The farmer's market will continue next year on the 100 block of West Broadway beginning in May. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, meet this week's Pets of the Week and stick around for our weekly events calendar. At Council Bluffs Savings Bank, our goal is to help you, your families, and your businesses grow and prosper for generations. We take pride in our community, whether it's volunteering our time or helping individuals, families, and businesses succeed. We provide you with the personal service and attention you deserve. With over 220 years of banking experience, decisions are made locally. We are Council Bluffs people operating at Council Bluffs Bank to help Council Bluffs be a better place to work and live. Council Bluffs Savings Bank, hometown banking, the way it used to be. Member FDIC. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western. The world is waiting. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Time now for Pets of the Week. Hi, my name is Misty Dino and I'm a volunteer with Solace, support our local animal shelter. This boy here with me is Angel. Angel is a chow mix about 10 years old. He was surrendered here because his family was moving and could not take him with them. He is such a sweet boy, but he's not a huge fan of cats, so he would need a home with no cats or small children. If you are interested in adopting Angel, his file number is 1136. We went from our senior dog to our little baby Binks here. Binks is a female beagle mix about 10 weeks old. 
She was found as a stray and she was in really bad shape. But she got all fixed up and now she is available for adoption. If you are interested in adopting Binks, her file number is 1282. Jake is going to be a scary spider for Halloween. Jake is a one-year-old black and white domestic short hair. He was surrendered to the shelter because his previous family just could no longer take care of him. But what a sweet and tolerant kitty. If you are interested in adopting Jake, his file number is 1349. This is Shadow. Shadow is about a year old. He is a black domestic medium hair. He was found in a stray on First Avenue here in Council Bluffs. He's a very sweet guy and he's dressed like the scariest creature of all, the veterinarian. <laughs> he is a very sweet boy and if you are interested in adopting Shadow, his file number is 1042. And don't forget that October is Adopt a Shelter Dog Month and Solis will be picking a lucky dog each week for the dog of the week and they will donate $20 towards the adoption fee. And also continuing will be Cat of the Week where Solis will pick a special cat and donate $20 towards their adoption. If you are interested in any of the pets you've seen here today, you can come down to the Council Bluffs Animal Shelter at 2821 South 15th Street in Council Bluffs. Time now for our weekly events calendar. In honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the community-wide pink out is this Friday. A 5K fun run and one mile walk will take place on the 100 block of West Broadway after the mayoral proclamation at 6.30. Participants are encouraged to wear as much pink as they can. Continuing with the pink out, Pinker Size in the Park is Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. For a suggested donation of $10, you can work out to Jazzercise, Insanity, Hip Hop, Yoga, and Zumba. And later that night, the Save Second Base pub crawl begins at 4 on the 100 block. Registration goes until 7 and the fundraiser goes until 8. Cost is $20 and you can even win prizes. Shifting gears now, take your old cars for a spin at the Iowa Route 6 Classic Car Cruise October 11th. Register from 2.30 to 4 p.m. on the 100 block of West Broadway for just $10. Show is from 4 to 7 p.m. Head out to Arrowhead Park for the annual Chili Fest, also on the 11th. Everything from children's games and activities to pumpkin painting and hay rack rides will take place from 4 to 8 p.m. Cost is $5 for ages 14 and up, $2 for ages 6 to 13, and children 5 and under get in free. Kinder Nature continues this Sunday from 1.30 to 2.30 at Hitchcock Nature Center in Honey Creek, Iowa. This month's theme is Let's Get Batty. Children 3 to 5 years old can participate for $5. Visit podcoconservation.com for more details. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. CBTV is always looking for your feedback. You can send questions or comments to cbtv at iwcc.edu. Call 712-325-3312 or find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search CBTV17. Remember to keep it here for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community by tuning in to the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Marie Zeitner. See you next week.